This production is brought to you by Ancient Origins, reconstructing the story of humanity's past, and the YouTube channel, The Study of Antiquity and the Middle Ages. Fall of Troy, The Legend and the Facts, by Maria Carmela Montesanto. Originally published in the conversation as If Only We Could Ask Euripides About Refugees by Laura Swift. Narrated by D.W. Draffin. What do we truly know about the city of Troy, the ruins of which have been painstakingly excavated over the past 150 years? At its peak, around 1300 to 1200 BCE, at the height of the Late Bronze Age, Mycenaean city-states based in modern-day Greece were competing with the larger Hittite Empire, located in modern-day Turkey, to control the trade routes leading toward the eastern Mediterranean and the Black Sea. Troy, in ancient Greek Ilios, was located in western Turkey, not far from the modern city of Çanakkale, better known as Gallipoli, at the mouth of the Dardanelles Strait. Its position was crucial in controlling the trade routes toward the Black Sea and, as the Trojan prince Paris mentions to the Spartan king Menelaus in Homer's epic tale, the Iliad, the city controlled access to Indian silks and spices. The Late Bronze Age was an era of powerful kingdoms and city-states centered around fortified walled palaces. Commerce was based on a complex gift exchange system between the different political states. The trade system was mainly controlled by the kings, and evidence referring to private merchants is very rare. These kingdoms exchanged not only silks and spices, but also gold, silver, copper, grain, craftsmanship, and slaves. Bronze Age Politics the Hittites were an ancient Anatolian people whose empire was centered in north and central Anatolia from around 1600 to 1200 BCE. The Hittite empire at its high point included modern Lebanon, Syria, and Turkey. The city of Troy was part of a small independent confederation named Asuwa that tried to resist the Hittite expansion, but which eventually yielded and became a sort of vassal state to the Hittite Empire. Archaeologists working in Greece and Turkey have discovered a great deal of evidence of this complex political system, of the kind that might have inspired Homer's epic. Political treaties discovered in the Hittite capital Hattusha, dating back to the late Bronze Age, confirm the existence of a very powerful city not far from the Dardanelles Strait called Wilusa, ruled by a king named Alaxandu, maybe the Trojan prince Paris, whose birth name, according to Homer, was Alexander. And archaeologists working in Troy have discovered skeletons, arrowheads, and traces of destruction which point to us a violent end for Troy Level 7, as the late Bronze Age city has been designated by archaeologists. So far, levels 1 to 9 have been excavated. At that stage, the political and economic system in the Mediterranean was disintegrating. A series of factors, states' internal turmoil, mass refugee migrations, displacement of people, trade disruption, and war, led to the collapse of the political system and to a new era. Because of new technology being adopted by the powers of the time, this has become known as the Iron Age. The beginning of this new era witnessed destruction throughout the Mediterranean basin. Wealthy cities such as Troy, as well as Mycenae and Tiryns in Greece were destroyed and abandoned. These events were so significant that the memory lasted for centuries. In Greek mythology, the tale of the fall of Troy was recorded in two epics, the Iliad and the Odyssey, traditionally attributed to Homer and written about 400 years after these events. What history tells us? More than a century of archaeological and historical research in the eastern Mediterranean basin 
appears to confirm that there was a war on Troy when Homer says there was. His account centers around the affair between Paris and the Spartan queen Helen that is said to have triggered the conflict. But contemporary sources from the Hittite archives in Hattusha tell a different story. Greek kingdoms conducted a number of military campaigns in western Turkey. Hittite records mention raids and mass kidnapping of people to be sold as slaves. There is a record of a peace treaty between Greeks and Hittites over the city of Troy. These records do not in themselves confirm the accuracy of Homer's account, but they suggest that something important happened in the area at some point around 1200 BCE. Outstanding Value The location of Troy at the crossroad between the east and the west is not only a center of challenge embodied by the Trojan War, but also of dialogue. Troy, in the past, was a bridge between cultures, and its importance to the world has been confirmed by UNESCO. The site of Troy was enlisted in the World Cultural Heritage List in 1998 and is considered a site of outstanding universal value. Excavations on the site of Troy started more than 150 years ago. The site was discovered in 1863 by Frank Calvert, but it really became famous thanks to the excavations conducted by the German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann in 1870. The work of Schliemann made the story come true and resulted in renewed interest in Troy and its history. Some 24 excavations spread over 150 years have now revealed many levels of occupation of the site, from the Early Bronze Age, Troy Level 1, about 3,500 BCE, to the Roman Era, Troy 9, about 500 CE. An award-winning project, Troya Museum, opened in 2018, Turkey's Year of Troy. Turkey's culture ministry invited some of the actors from the 2004 epic Hollywood movie Troy to lend the event some star power. We'll probably never know if Helen's beauty really did launch a thousand ships, but in decades to come, Troy will continue to yield up its fascinating and romantic history, and millions of people will thrill to retellings of Homer's epic fables of the long past age of heroes. Ancient Origins specializes in reconstructing the story of humanity's past. And honestly, for those of you who love anything ancient, mysterious, and the unexplained, it's the best resource online for you, providing a variety of content. But more importantly, it's helping us understand the subjects that we all love. From the fringe to the mainstream, you get the best of everything. But if you want access to even greater content, I highly suggest you becoming a premium member to Ancient Origins. And for those of you who may ask, okay, why? I have an answer for you. One, it is a treasure trove of information. It gives you even more access to the subjects that you love from ebooks, webinars, expeditions, even more articles. But in some cases, you get to talk to the experts themselves. And by being a subscriber, to Ancient Origins, you are continuing to help them make history matter. Ancient Origins literally has something for everyone. So, before we get to the presentation, check out the links in the video description below. I'm going to provide you with a variety of references to Ancient Origins from their Facebook page and other social media outlets to the very heart of the Ancient Origins website itself to help people like me and you better understand the subjects of history, mystery, and the unexplained that we all love.